There's the different types of leadership. There's technical leaders, there's vocal leaders. Rio was a top leader, John Terry was a top leader. And you do a lot of watching, a lot of learning, and you pick a lot of things up from different footballers as you go along, and that's what I try to do. I had vague memories of 1986 in Mexico, but I was six years of age. Um, the first World Cup that really gripped me was Italia 90. Uh, I was 10 years of age, come from a football family, and my dad and my brother. We watched that World Cup together and went on a journey together as a family, if you like. The game after in the last 16 was the game when Gary Lineker scored the penalties in that game, which took us to the semi-final. I think that was the team performance and, and the inspiration. I smile every time I think about that tournament because from an England point of view, that was the moment that set my dream off, to want to play for England and follow my dreams. I had a lot of heroes back then, Gary Lineker, Paul Gascoigne, David Platt, Peter Shilton even as a goalkeeper, you know, and, and annoy my parents by diving around the house pretending I'm a goalkeeper. Um, I think then players were inspiring the nation at the time and taking everyone on a journey and because I was 10 and I understood what it was all about, I was at that right age. But now I've got a five-year-old in Leo, I'll certainly be trying to echo the same messages that my dad passed down to me, put the right values in him um, in terms of like trying to be a leader, trying to be inspirational, trying to do whatever you need to do to follow your dreams. It has to be him wanting to follow his own heroes. And I was lucky enough to compete against some of my heroes, like Paul Gascoigne, like Alan Shearer. I shared the dressing room with Alan Shearer. He was there on, on the first occasion. I think um, at the time I was doing pretty well for Liverpool, but you still don't think that an England call is due or is going to happen. I remember being at home and I remember the phone going on a walk over to my grandma's and I actually thought it was a prank at the time, but it was Kevin Keegan. It was, was a dream come true and it was an emotional time because I think a lot of hard work, a lot of sacrifice, uh, a lot of setbacks along the way, but also following your dreams and never giving up. It was a big, it was a big phone call. You're really looking forward to, to starting to train and be around some of these heroes and some of these top players to to experience it, but you're also very nervous, you're very shy, and it takes time to, to evolve and come out of your, your shell and uh, find your own personality within the group. Also, the, the leaders in the dressing room, your Alan Shearers of the world, Mark Keowns, Steve McManaman, and Robbie Fowler, players that come from the same team as myself, they really went out of the way to give me the support I needed to make me feel relaxed and comfortable. You know, you go into your first game against Ukraine at Wembley in front of a full house. And it's a whirlwind of, of a game because your dream's coming through in front of you. You're so happy and you're on a high, but you've also got to be in a zone which is extremely focused. Pressure can be looked at in two ways. I've always tried to look at pressure as uh, responsibility and um, try to look at it in a, in a positive way. So I've tried to always try and go into um, battle or challenges in front of me in a positive mindset when it comes to pressure because it was my choice, it was my dream. I wanted to be in that environment and wanted to challenge myself. I can remember the game like it was um, a few weeks back, coming up against a really strong German team away from home. Very little support inside the stadium. We were starting to get a little bit of confidence. A new manager was recently in the door in Sven Gordon Eriksson. And I think when you're surrounded by players like David Beckham and Paul Scholes and Michael Owen, Rio Ferdinand, you've always got a chance in every game. So I was extremely confident from a personal point of view that we could go there and upset the Germans in their own backyard and we managed to do it convincingly. We had a lot of incredible individuals, uh, a lot of world-class players, but we didn't gel enough. There was a lot of clicks. Um, there was the Chelsea group, Man United group, there was the Liverpool group, and it's impossible to win a World Cup or uh, a European tournament if you're not one, if you're not a group, if you're not all pulling in the right direction, if you're not all prepared to do what it needs to do for the future, to become a better team, to be more successful. But we did on that night. Uh, against Germany and if we could have consistently found that level of performance I'd be sitting here talking about a completely different England journey. I think that's what Harry Kane does now extremely well. He makes sure that his performance is a top but you can see that he's really uniting this group of players in a different way. They're a lot stronger, they're a lot more of a team than we had. So I think going away for England now is a real buzz and something that they really look forward to. I think the friends but I also think Gareth Southgate's played an incredible role in that. 
I'm not surprised by it at all, but he's been the best England manager for probably since Bobby Robson, in my opinion. I think what people need to know about him is what he does that probably goes unnoticed. In the last month or so, when I was having a tough time as the Aston Villa manager, he was on the phone, he was sending messages, he wanted to be a support to me and he didn't have to do that. You know, he's got a World Cup on the horizon, but he goes out of his way to lend a hand and support. And I think that shows the type of man and leader that he is. When I was picked and selected to become the captain, it made me go back uh, uh, along the journey of everything that I went through to get there. It's very similar to the reason why I'm involved with Hyundai, that when you get the opportunity to be part of a team and make a difference, and when you believe in the end goal, um, I think it was quite a no-brainer and easy decision for me to want to be part of this. I want my kids to have the best lives they can have. I want them to live in the best place, the best environment. I want them to be able to chase their own dreams. I think there's a lot of messages, there's a lot of key lines, a lot of nuggets that I can give my own kids, but also other children that I come across on a daily basis. The majority of the world loves the game. We have a responsibility to protect it for, for the future generations. We need to educate people on and off the pitch to make the world better from a sustainability point of view. With Hyundai, challenging project, but also for football as well, because there's dreams out there for people, girls and boys, in the future. Uh, I've lived mine. And I feel like I've got a responsibility to help people that are going to come after me as well.